Bouchard is going to disrupt this move, and that is not good news for the break. On to stage six of the Dauphiné, a nice little appetizer before heading into the high mountains this weekend. Just under 200 kilometers between Reeve and Gap with almost 3,000 meters of climbing. The final difficulty, the Col de Cabre, is a shade over nine kilometers at 4.6%, but it tops out with almost 60K remaining. It looks like a good day for the breakaway, but that depends on how much rope they are given by the GC teams, in particular Jumbo Visma and their race leader, Wout Van Aert. I think the chance of a breakaway arriving in the finish is even bigger. The stage is harder and uh, I think uh, a lot of teams want to end up in a break and not, not chasing. Uh, so uh, yeah, we'll see how we can manage that. Today well, I will know after 50 kilometers how the stage is going to be. For sure with the tailwind that the, the last 100k or so going to be another day that the break uh, can go really far, like you often see in this race. There was a nervy start to the day's action with lots of riders trying their luck. The right move eventually went after around 50 kilometers, kicked off by a group of French riders. Among them was Pierre Roland, who was keen to pick up more King of the Mountains points. The highest placed on GC was Andrea Pagioli from Quick Step Alpha Vinyl, some three minutes and two seconds down on Van Aert this morning. The Italian was joined by no fewer than six Frenchmen, all from French teams. Roland, Warren Bargill, Geoffrey Bouchard, Valentin Ferron, Victor Lefay, who was third on stage three, and Bruno Armouray, a man with a plan. Well, yesterday's breakaway only got caught right at the end, so yeah, I definitely fancy it today. Well, the riders tearing through this stage far more quickly than anticipated with the help of a tailwind. They were well ahead of the predicted average speed. Amurai was the only man unable to keep pace at the front, but the other six were collaborating very nicely indeed. Their lead over the peloton still two and a half minutes, heading into the final 40 kilometers. Trek Segafredo giving Jumbo Visma a hand at the front of the peloton, perhaps thinking about setting something up for Jasper Steuven, but the Belgian hasn't been able to match his compatriot Van Aert this week. The escapees, though, holding firm and the peloton quickly realised the writing was on the wall. This one would go to the breakaway. Trek giving up the chase and leaving Jumbo Visma to just control the gap and make sure Baggioli didn't gain too much time on Van Aert. The six leaders cruising towards Gap. There was a short, non-categorised climb a few kilometres before town, potentially a launch pad for the weaker sprinters. Just before getting to Gap, there's a little climb around eight kilometres from the finish, so if it's one for the breakaway, someone can make the difference there. In the end, nothing doing. The only half-hearted attempt came from Boucher, who was named the day's most combative rider. A little bit of finessing in the front group meant that their advantage had dropped to under a minute by the time that they actually reached Gap. But once they were under the Flamme Rouge, Ferron went for it. A huge attack from the Total Energies rider. Now the question was, could the others bring him back? Valentin Ferron, a stage winner in the Tour of Rwanda, 24 years of age, never won a World Tour race. And it's slightly uphill now, have the riders behind him, left it too late. This young rider heading for victory for Total Energy, Valentin Ferron wins the stage. Total Energy is taking their second win from the breakaway at this Dauphiné. After Alexi Viermo on stage two, Valentin Ferron secures his maiden World Tour victory. His only previous win came at the Tour of Rwanda 2021, where funnily enough, he also finished ahead of Pierre Roland. The 24-year-old's been in a couple of breakaways this year at Torano Adriatico and Flesh Vallon. He was also second at Paris Camembert, and today he has potentially staked his claim for a spot at the Tour de France. Well, you have to savour it because you may not get too many victories in a career. It's fantastic. It's really a special feeling to win here. I'm not quite sure how to describe my emotions. I think we'll be celebrating at the hotel tonight and perhaps I'll realise what I've done. Ferrand is the third Frenchman to win at this Dauphiné, even leading home a 1-2-3. Dylan Grunewagen finally got the chance to stretch his legs, but he could only manage third in the sprint from the peloton. Van Aert remains top of the pile before a busy weekend. Jumbo Visma also have Primoz Roglic and Jonas Vingegaard inside the top five. Baggioli jumps up 10 places to 16th, but he's still two and a half minutes off the pace. 
Van Aert didn't pick up any points today, finishing 12th, but he still has a firm grip on the green jersey. Provided he finishes on Sunday, he should secure that classification for the third time. Pierre Anon extending his lead in the mountains classification to 21 points over VMO. He'll have a busy weekend defending his polka dot jersey, which he's hoping to win for the second time after 2008. Ethan Hayter still the best young rider ahead of Matteo Jorgensen and Bagioli. Juan Ayuso was sitting second this morning, but the Spanish teenager didn't start the stage because of a fever. There's a real Tour de France feel to Saturday's short but gruelling seventh stage, 135 kilometres, heading over the Col du Galibier and the Col de la Croix de Fer before an uphill finish to Vaugeny. Another Dauphiné starts tomorrow, so do join us then, and thanks for watching.